Joining us is Alice Stewart, CNN political commentator, former communications director for Republican Senator Ted Cruz. Uh, Alice, let me start with you. In the days after the search, uh, Trump was raising a million dollars a day. People were saying now is the time to go in. The party is rallying behind you. Do you believe that uh, this rolling re revelation uh, of the, the search and, and the documents has changed the landscape? Well, Victor, uh, Kirsten was right in terms of a lot of people, Republicans, that were ready to turn their back on uh, former President Trump are rallying behind him, and they are um, supporting him and feel as though he is the victim in this case. I don't happen to agree with that uh, uh, synopsis of, of what is going on with him. But here's the thing. We can't support the candidate that can win a primary that's not going to win in the general election. And look, I don't care about Donald Trump's legal troubles. I do care about the political troubles that he's causing his hand-picked candidates. Candidates. We're seeing in many of these key Senate races, these candidates are struggling because of their embracing of the um, election denials and their embrace of January 6. And we're seeing them scrubbing their websites, shifting their message and moderating to the middle because they understand that what might work for uh, the base of the Republican Party and supporting Donald Trump is not a winning formula for a general election candidate. So the more time we spend talking about Donald Trump and the, the frustrations of the past president and not the failures of the current president, we are losing time. We have 69 days between now and the general election. We need to be talking about the in increasing inflation, increasing crime, and the ongoing recession, and not about the past president. Margaret, I, I think that Kristen's uh, reporting is very interesting. But since when does Donald Trump listen to conventional wisdom or listen to political advice? I'm just surprised that he would say, oh, okay, good idea. I won't announce until after the midterms. The Democrats are already using all of this against, you know, any Republican candidates as if they needed to. I mean, they're also using abortion. Do you think that he is listening to advisors who say don't announce before midterms? I, I'm really struck by what we're not hearing in the public space right now, because in the opening days of the search, uh, you couldn't um, look at Twitter or put on the TV and not see a Republican in leadership or in a prominent national position defending at least the idea of the president. Uh, but that has changed over recent days. And after the most recent DOJ filing, my colleague Elena Trina at Axios has been reaching out across congressional leadership in the House and the Senate. She did hear back from Elise Stefanik, uh, whose uh, team gave her um, a very detailed statement of the Russia hoax 2.0, Biden media conspiracy. All, like, she's still defending Trump. But um, Kevin McCarthy, no statement. Mitch McConnell, no statement. Heard back from another. Um, Republican aide who said, well, uh, his boss uh, doesn't have a statement because there's no news. Obviously, this is a huge news development. So I think there is a recalibration, a real consideration about not wanting to do damage to particularly some of these pivotal Senate races on which the control of the Senate is going to be won or lost. It's not a primary campaign anymore. It is the general election. But Alice, you're... you're Alice, let me ask you a question specifically. You're one of those prominent Republicans who, right after the search, um, defended the president. You said the day after the search that you accepted Donald Trump's word that he complied to some degree with federal authorities, and it was really hard to look at the search as anything short of an overreach by the federal authorities and potential political persecution. After all that we've learned, after the release uh, of this document overnight, you still believe that? I do not. I, I clearly have, with the more transparency that we have seen and the more information that has been put out there, uh, I feel as though that this is a problem for Donald Trump. And one of the things that jumped out at me in the documents that were handed out last night was the fact that these were not the former president's documents. These are government documents, top secret classified documents, many of them. And what they have determined with their investigation is that by him obtaining these and holding these at Mar-a-Lago, there could be the effort to obstruct a government investigation. Look, many people right out of the gate uh, looked at this uh, a different way, but transparency is a beautiful thing, Victor. And the more we learn, uh, the more I am concerned about uh, why he had them in the first place and certainly uh, why they were stored the way they were. And just to follow up on one of Margaret's points, she's talking about getting uh, responses and feedback from members of, of Congress about um, 
the, the midterm elections. I think one of the, the biggest statements we've seen from uh, an official in the GOP side with regard to the midterm elections is Mitch McConnell saying that he is concerned about the candidate quality that we have uh, out there. And that is Donald Trump's handpicked candidates are struggling. And we need to make sure that they, to the degree they can over the next 69 days, distance themselves from him and start talking about the issues that the people are concerned with, and that is inflation and crime. Alice Stewart, Margaret Talov, thank you both.